कृपया ध्यान दीजिए द लैंग्वेज यूज ऑन द पॉडकास्ट मे नॉट बी फिट फॉर कंजम्पन वी वॉन्ट यू ट्रेड केयरफुली बट लिसन यार डोंट बी सो कंजर्वेटिव Yes, there's uh, one of the pillars in my building, somewhere in Malabar Hill, where the poor live, which is uh, rusted and crumbled a little bit. Uh, I'm using that as an analogy because the person coming on is one of the pillars of television, who's not rusted at all, but become bigger, stronger. And actually, when the history of television is written, this man's name will be there, right at the top. Very amazing journey. I've studied his journey from the time when he literally started at the bottom. He's going to tell us all that, and to where he became a mover and shaker and a designer of television and now OTT, whatever you want to call the medium, all that and more. His name is Nayar Samir Nayar. Uh, I thought I'd give you a James Bond like entry, Samir. You always <laughs> like that glamour thing. Uh, we don't have music. We don't have uh, hot females in the background. Nothing like that. But what we do have is a tribute to your greatness. So anything great about you can be discussed today. Feel free to lie also at any point. In, yeah. Let's begin okay. with how much you earn in applause and how much you donate to charity. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. So, uh, Sami, great to have you. Uh, right now, you're running applause, uh, but it's it's been a huge journey. Have you ever actually looked back uh, on a on a on a medium like this and spoken to anyone about your life? Because uh, I mean, would you even remember how many things you've done, in a sense? I don't know. You know what happens is that when you look back at life, you know, much like how when you look at sport, um, you know, you always see the final scores, right? So you say so and so won this match with these scores: six three, six two, seven six, six seven, whatever. Um, and that's how you know sort of history gets recorded. But the real life being led is all the points, you know, all the points, all the little wins, all the little losses, the. The breaks in between, the rest stops. I'm the still injuries, intrigued at the, at the tennis reference. I thought you'd go cricket, but you decided to show your elitism immediately and go with tennis. <laughs> no, okay, I like enough. both. I don't mind tennis or cricket. I can give you a whole range of metaphors on cricket. I use both actually. Good, um, we'll we'll so get for life. Sorry, you go. No, no. I wanted to just start at the beginning because we were jumping ahead. I wanted to start right at the beginning. I'm trying to remember my first memory of you. Uh, you literally worked in production, right? Right back yeah. in maybe the late eighties, early nineties. I don't. Let's not date it, but long, long ago. Because we're not that right. old. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so, <laughs> not are you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, come on, and you know, I have the hair to show it. Not, not much, but whatever is left. Uh, Sami, so, let's just go back to how did you land up in this business to begin with? What was the idea for a young Sami Nair? I mean, look, if you can remember your teenage years, what, what do you want to do? How did you land up here? Because I know it was initially a huge struggle. So let's hear you know, the beginning of the story. So I'll tell you, when I was growing up, you know, I was actually uh, really short as a child. So I was the shortest in the class. And I stayed that height for the longest time of my life. You know, so I think almost till class twelve, I had barely got to like five feet wow. one or two. Um, but you're so six foot plus. Then, yeah. So obviously, you can understand that it would have had a lot of psychological damage in my life growing up. And that three words: HGH, to- human growth hormone. <laughs> I want Wada to check you out, bro. There's something fishy going on. I, yeah, at the age of seventeen, to- you put on a foot. One I, I did actually. I yeah, I just went from like five one or five two to about six in over six months actually. So one question. it really changed did, my life. Sami, sorry, but did everything grow in proportion? It did. It did actually. You would be pleased to know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not pleased to know that. I just what the hell kind of point is that? Yeah. No, since you're asking. Since you're okay, asking. all right. So, let's leave it there. So I spent the longest time in really you know because I was you uh, know uh, both short and studious. Uh, I naturally gravitated towards science. Um, I th- and I really was quite keen, and I wanted to study. I want to be a scientist. I want to go to NASA. All of those kind of things. Uh, then I suddenly shoot up and grow up like this. So I promptly lose interest in science. Um, you know, I get myself contacted. What correlation you come up with? A girlfriend. Oh. Um, you know, various things happen. And of course, at that time in the early eighties, the you know, if if I was not going to pursue my science career, then the other exciting and attractive thing at the time was advertising. My brother-in-law was in advertising. He used to work in Lintas at that time, and uh, you know, all around me, you know, advertising was the cool thing. TV was only Doordarshan. Uh, movies Correct. was a little far cry, though. Me and my mom have seen every possible Hindi movie that released, every English movie that released. But I was sort of drawn to advertising. I thought I'd try and get into advertising. 
um, I couldn't get in so easily because, you know, I had to first finish studying. Um, I was in Xavier's doing my BSc. In well, let's just set up for a second um, that advertising in the 80s was the happening place, right? It was a place where all the place. happening people met, the colorful parties, the hot, glamorous people, uh, you know, and plus the creative uh, touch to the whole thing that you're making the most, uh, you know, out there sort of creative, uh, you know, voices, etc. And in touch with those people as well. So let, let's just put that right. out there. So it was a place you wanted and to be in, not just for financial I, I really wanted to be in that place. and uh, But, you know, I left Xavier's after doing two years of BSc because, you know, I was too caught up in becoming a great TT player. What is this BSc? And... Let's talk about BSc for a second, Samir. I've never mm -hmm. understood what a person does with just a BSc. You know, a big deal about getting into science and a job I... awaits you at the what, lab assistant. What do you do after that if you don't Nothing. do anything further? Which is the concern. So actually, my plan was that after the 12th, I would go to IIT, but I couldn't do that. So then this became a sort of a default position to do, but I tired of it very quickly. Um, so then I left that. And of course, my parents were quite freaked out about this, that, you know, you can't end up being uneducated in that sense. So as a sort of a compromise situation, I went to Chennai and I did hotel management. Um, so I did hotel management. I did a BA in economics along the way. Uh, but I, after completing that, I still, I was in Chennai for three years then after that. And then I came back to Bombay, but I still couldn't get into advertising because, you know, now it turned out that I was wrongly qualified for advertising. So advertising wouldn't help me. Um, I spent some time. I did, uh, you know, I, was, I turned entrepreneur. I, you know, set up a food catering service in Bombay. In Wow, so you were a startup and, before startups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a startup and I had grand plans. You know, of course, I had no money. and you know, well, What kind really of food? Do, much do you remember? Uh, what, what food I you guys, I used to make chicken rolls and hot dogs and supply them to a place I'm your in man. town called Grub Corner, uh, right next to Hong Kong Bank, you know, on Ooh, the right. Bombay Heights Road. Fountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Fountain. Yeah. So I used to come from Andheri and uh, you know, give it to them. And I did. I had ran it for about three or four months quite successfully. It was like a little bit of a mad experiment of my own. Uh, yeah. till my and mom you make told money me and, that... and put it right in the bank next door. Well, yeah. actually, it used to be just turnover. <laughs> it was not really making money. But I got to a pretty good scenario. I think in 87, I had got up to selling about 200 rolls a day. So wow. it was all in all not a bad scenario. It was just one crazy. I was just doing it on my own, all alone, working and getting it done. So my mom came and told me that, listen, you know, this is hardly a plan. So you know, why don't you do something more? fruitful in life. So I went and joined the Yellow Pages um, as a sales executive. I thought it would be the best way to get into advertising because at least it's, you know, getting close to media in that sense. It's um, easier for you to get an MBA than get into advertising, it looks like in the 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was really hard. Yeah, I mean, no hard meaning, I'm maybe, I don't know. It just didn't you need, happen. You need to, I, I guess Bombay was locked down in that sense. You, know, you need to call the right person to, you know, get an introduction to somebody to enter the... Well, it was all, funnily it was all... enough, I no. Funnily enough, I did know the right people. I mean, my brother-in-law was in Lintas. I did know so other people. Why, why couldn't you get an interview in Lintas or one of the other agencies? I don't know. I mean, I did a few interviews, and it always ended up with you know, like oh, I don't know, I don't know. So any case, see if you were short, you would have got the job. You were too tall. I would I think, have. I would. Yeah. Have. yeah, that's true. You know, I think I screwed it up with the height. Yeah. Um, so uh, then after that, I got into Yellow Pages, which was good because then it was you know I got into space selling in that sense. It was a startup. Um, so my second startup again, and um, that company I worked in for two years. I did a lot of work there. So the my the big boss of that company was Anil Kapoor, who you know Billy Kapoor, who became the boss of Olka, right? Yeah. So yeah. you know, so I got a chance to work with him and the other gang who all joined Olka later. Um, and I spent two years there. I worked in Bombay doing door to door sales in Bombay uh, and all Masjid Bandar and Vadala and Siuri and all of that. And then I also got Gujarat as a territory. So I went, you know, traveling to Anand, then Rajkot and all of that. It was good fun. I quite enjoyed that. I learned everything there. I learned how to sell, which is the most important thing. Um, I learned to, you know, sort of, you know, really get out there and, you know, meet monthly targets and weekly targets and make plans and all of that. And after two years, actually, I had a, my, my college sweetheart in, back in Chennai. So there was this pressure of having to get married and, you know, getting on with life in that sense. So I went, I applied for a job in Chennai and got it. So I joined advertising for the first time in Chennai in Goldwater. Oh, so you switched, um, but you were still in advertising. You just switched cities. Yeah, yeah. No, then I went, I switched cities and I managed to land my advertising job finally. I joined Goldwire, which was a break off from Lintas, which was set up by Aubrey Sequera, if you remember him. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously it were at set up lintas and uh, gold wire and i went back to chennai i got married i joined gold wire and uh, i actually went there to do client servicing i thought i am wear a tie and go and you know get get started the business that way but what happened there is that i got really fortunate so i think that was my first super lucky break is because shortly after i joined the entire film and creative team quit gold wire and i somehow in a weird way inherited the film and tv department so i knew nothing about it you know i had no clue what i'm supposed to do in that uh, but i got into that film and tv department and goldwire was a very active company so they used to do a lot of work for mrf and so you know the tire with muscle started, the tire with muscle exactly and so i did a lot of work there we used to do uh, we used to buy programming and put it on doordarshan at the time and so we used to edit it and put it on to dd so i've done street talk um, you know night rider glow friends my little pony the grammy awards film wow. fair awards all I kinds of things understand for a second you went from a sales background you went to do client servicing you landed up running the film department yeah so that was good fortune for me yeah. uh, very fortunate all by all by and accident all by accident and of course i took to it so it turned out that you know this whole film and tv business i was made for it and so i didn't i mean i didn't respond poorly to it at all i really took to it and i got on to it really quickly um and i learned um, all of everything i learned about this business i learned from obri sequera uh, working with him um, and i spent i think almost 4 years there so i was i started making ad films started making corporate videos documentaries all of that stuff and we used to do a lot of work for mrf for fun school for other clients in chennai and um, you know i did that for about 4 years then again you know this entrepreneurial bug came my way so i decided to turn independent and become an independent ad filmmaker as to what everyone does you know after a few years in an agency you, you rob the clients and you run off that's the indian way well, yeah that's what you, you try to do yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, unfortunately i did couldn't you, rob break, the clients did you break all no, these no, heart or was it a no, happy no, no, I didn't. it was okay actually we remained friends always and um, but i couldn't really succeed as an entrepreneur there as a being an independent ad filmmaker but along that time i got a call from my old childhood friend from bandra um who you know was in hong kong at the time and she called up and said that hey listen the star tv is going to come to india and you no know, why don't you apply and you know come and join star tv so i said okay and i sent a application to join i at the time my hope was because i had done so much of sport work at goldwire with mrf i thought i i wanted to go to hong kong and join star sports as a promo producer i thought that would be a sort of a good you know sort of thing for me to do and then my second option was that i could join star plus as a sort of a programming executive or whatever what i got was a job in star movies um to create interstitial programming for star movies when it launches in india so i had star of course no idea the english english platform the hollywood english movie channel yeah yeah, yeah. yeah hollywood films and it was launching it was the first pay channel to launch in india um so in any case i met tony watts um in bombay and he said that this is a plan i said what exactly is interstitial programming so he said oh well you know it's behind the scenes on locations and interviews with uh, bollywood stars and indian movie stars and you know producers creators which we make into 15 minute capsules and play in between movies and star movies and the first thought that came to my head was oh my god that's like bajaj ki le rahe hain but uh, i said yeah okay cool i said in english language he said yes english language so i said okay i can do this and so i took the job and i came back to bombay and um, then we got started with star movies and i had quite the time there and that's how i joined star so but uh, so basically you worked only in star movies i always had the feeling that you were working more in like uh, the mother star channel star plus no actually when i joined i joined star movies star plus was an english language channel which used to do two or three shows i think you know they did oh, that the was also an english Nikita channel Night. star plus god i'm so star confused plus, when it first started it was an english channel you see santa barbara and bold and beautiful oh and right right god oh, you're aging and... us you're aging us something be careful what you say <laughs> and, and now you're not only aging us you're dumbing us down because now they know we watch santa barbara <laughs> <laughs> bold and the beautiful how can i forget my god right. amongst yeah. the, may i say amongst the worst shows that anyone can see yeah you know all of them we watch with the volume of still bearable but you know i mean santa barbara with this long sibi garewal revived that with her show rendezvous where you just look into camera for a long time and nothing happens <laughs> kind of thing so, so so the platform was star movies initially so you know you your initial life has been very colorful 
but no, completely like uh, you know sticking to one thing sort of you know you've gone from this to that this to that this to that this is also different from advertising where you were and uh, far away from chicken roll salesman far away from the very first thing you did and uh, mm-hmm. it's almost like again you're learning on the job because this is the first time they've come to the uh, to the country nobody really has data you're right you're like a pioneer but you're also experimenting all the time so right. uh, did you feel the pressure suddenly that you know you've got to sort of build this there's no precedent before you i think the good thing about being you know the wild west and being pioneering is that even though you don't know i mean there's no precedent before you and you don't know what's to be done nobody else does either right so i mean at least you're in relatively safe company because there's no expert here and everyone's talking through their hat and you know, mostly everyone is you know <laughs> gassing and goofing off and within that context i mean you, you know you can build it forward and take it and that's what we did so i mean the first two years in star movies was really creating you know a lot of uh you know great interstitial programming i got a chance to meet bollywood at close quarters at that time i've interviewed almost i've interviewed shahrukh khan three or four times in that period uh, mr bachchan many times all the movies that were leaving in that period we've done either you know behind the scenes or on location interviews or you know personal one on one interviews all kinds of things and created a lot of programming we did premieres of movies i did the launch of uh, bobby deol and twinkle khanna's barsat barsat uh, yeah. we had a grand premiere at metro it was actually just a contest but we made a big mm. sort of you know content thing around it we did mrityu data you know mr bachchan's great comeback movie mm. um, all sorts of things and used to work very closely with the gang at channel v at the time because you know channel v had broken off from had been created out of mtv right um, and of so course what? star plus was doing its stuff which was also the you know very infamous nikki tonight um, yes know, and those right. kind of things were going on. Oh, infamous is um, one episode where they made that Gandhi remark and then uh, unfortunately <laughs> or whatever. But uh, go, going back a little bit so were you uh, not intimidated but were you happy to be with these bollywood guys? Well, I mean from where to where? Yeah, you know yeah. chicken roll salesman suddenly Amitabh Bachchan is sitting across you and all that. How was how was that for you? Yeah, but it's okay. I mean at the end of the day, you know, I mean my uh, my approach to most of this has been that you know like I'm not a fan uh, really? but I'm not a critic either. uh i am you know i am growing up you I... said you mom and you would watch all the movies and all surely it was like all i mean from where to where sort of situation yeah but i don't know whether i am you know whether it was for me a you know gokwati moment kind of thing you know i mean i'm i'm happy to meet and see and get to know people better and all of that but it wasn't exactly being bedazzled um i am i am not easily bedazzled so <laughs> it, it takes something to do but i had good fun because you know it was really interesting um you know all the interviews we did and all the people we spoke to it was a great learning into how different artists and different talent look at their own medium look at what they are doing with their regard to their craft so i mean the one of my favorite questions used to be you know like what does acting mean to you kind of thing and the amazing you know sort of answers we've received from different people as to how you, they approach their craft um is quite without, interesting without telling their names could you tell us a couple of the answers then maybe i can guess uh well, i can tell you what 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 mr bachchan said was that huh. you know his the way he chose to describe it you know he said that what is you no know, what is acting you know, what does acting mean so here a very interesting uh, description he said that you know the first time you know you hear the story you hear it as a story then later you get to read it as a screenplay uh then you know it moves along from there and you've got dialogues and you're doing readings and stuff uh then you do rehearsals uh finally you land up on the set you do a couple of you know rehearsal takes and then finally it's time for action right for that moment and at that time you have now over the last 6 or 8 months you know exactly what the scene is right you know that the person is going to come and inform the hero that his mother is dead and now the hero has to respond and say kya ma mar gayi kind of thing mm-hmm. he said at that time when you make that performance you have to do it as if you're hearing the information for the first, first time, time. right yeah. because when you hear it for the first time the audience will hear it for the first time and that is acting so i thought like wow that sounds cool you know like <laughs> that's a that's a good way of doing it you know that you know everything about this you know like even in a horror movie when yeah. the uh, when the actor goes and opens the cupboard and a dead body falls out you know it's there you've done numerous rehearsals you know all of that is there but the fright and the spook at that moment and the surprise is what makes great actors and well not so great So maybe they should rename it acting again and again because you do acting so many times. <laughs> you have to, yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. In fact, even when you do theater, you guys do so much theater. You've actually done the performance so many times, right? I think over years is the worst moment. Thing, yeah. Yeah. And at that moment, when you're performing, and the audience sitting in the stage is always enthralled by the 
you know the sheer immediacy Your of it. Eight hundred the performance of that line. Yeah, okay. <laughs> fair enough. So, <laughs> yeah. what about the others? Give us a couple more examples. Huh? So, what are the answers? Sharuk, do you remember? Who, who, who? Well, there was. I I can't tell you the name, but there was one sort of another actor, senior actor, who had you know by the time I got to meet him, had you know become a villain. And so, you know, we were doing the standard, you know, like what is acting and how do you get into the skin of the character? And, you know, like and he was really grumpy and he got really pissed. And he said, what, what do you mean skin of the character? You call this acting. I am the heroine's father and I am a bad guy. And now after this scene, this fellow is going to come and hit me. You know, what is acting in this? So I said, no, oh, OK, so you're not getting into the skin of the character. But uh, yeah, so I mean, so he was unhappy with his uh, with his situation, well, obviously. You know, it's yeah. formulaic Bollywood cinema, yeah. so I mean, yeah. he was obviously unhappy with his position. Yeah, um, yeah. But um, all all kinds and different people have different views. But it was really interesting to meet people. Um, you know, even directors, uh, you know, cinematographers, you know, all kinds of people. As it was a good time for me, actually. I and in fact, a lot of people whom I interact with today, I we go back to the early nineties. But you know, so what at this point, let's stop there for a second and pause there for a second. When you're at your the star movies experimental phase, you know, sort of situation, how would you describe yourself? Because you know, you've already worn these five, six hats. You're definitely there's definitely a creative uh, side to it. There's a very strong production side, there's a, probably a marketing side to it. So, how do you describe Sami Nair as a person working in television at that point? I think at that time, I suppose the extent of my like what I was thinking would be that, you know. Uh, making progress in star um, obviously i wanted to get to star plus because that was you know the big you know that's the big programming thing to do at the end of the day interstitial programming for star movies is a you know is a real side act and the idea was to get into you know mainline programming or you know really big content the kind of content that we consume and watch um, and to you know make movies eventually you know so that was the, my sort of mindset at the time so, so by now you, you had decided you will make films yeah, yeah. Of I wanted yeah. to. I wanted to make films back in Chennai. I mean, the whole thing about getting into advertising was eventually to someday make a film. Um, so that, but that everyone has. So I don't know whether that's so unique. I mean, if you're in the business, you say you know, should make a movie. But that was where I was thinking, and the plan was to you know work around, um, keep making, and also you know again what happens with life is that you know you see it in retrospect and you say oh these were the big moments at that time it's going day by day. You know, week by week, month by month, you know, all the points, all the wins, all the losses, you know, things are happening. So the big thing that happened was that suddenly there was a big turmoil in Star and Ratikant Basu arrived into Star. Correct. So yeah. Ratikant Basu arrived into Star, then Star suddenly went from Angriyadon ke zamane ke manager hai hum to now mm. suddenly we are hardcore Indian bureaucrats have come in. And he brought mm. his entire team from Doordarshan and came. And then Star went to a, through a cultural and you know, psychological. And Was it forward or backward? Well, see, honestly, for my scheme of things, in the beginning, I didn't know what is going on here. You know, like, I mean, these guys have arrived and I'm trying to make contact and they don't want to meet me. I'm also in a funny space because I am technically the head of star movies in India. But in the face of all these, you know, big senior people who've arrived now, I'm like some EP, I'm like a flunky here, you know, like, so suddenly my equation with Hong Kong is, you know, under like under a little bit of pressure because now we've got a new Indian management. Uh, but in about three or four months, I managed to, you know, sort of get closer to Mr. Basu and you know, sort of at least, you know, get him to acknowledge my existence. And uh, then I did a lot more work after that. So then after that, I continued, of course, I continued to work with Star Movies. But uh, shortly after that, I also became the head of promos for Star Network in India. So that was a big sort of move. So Star ne so Network means the whole thing, everything. Whole thing was then at that time it meant Star Movies and Star Plus. So that was one big sort of move forward. And then from there I started doing you no know, network presentation. And uh, by the time Mr. Basu and gang were leaving uh, two and a half years later, I had sort of you know also done Hindi movie acquisitions and I had also continued my wow. Star Movies work. So, so it had it was it turned out to be a good period for me, but it was quite traumatic, I must say, to start with, you know, that. You know, but was, look at the irony actually that's happening here. So what happened is these guys come in, you're not sure with this corporate structure who's who. You don't know whether you're still there or not there, whether you're top dog or bottom dog, all that. But at the end of the day, you stay and they all disappear at some point. You know, yeah, and so in a sense... The way, they the way they disappeared also was funny because, you know, two and a half years on, I was like, you know, like I still hadn't got to my sort of, you know, dream that, you know, run Star Plus. And it was all over the place in that sense. 
So I had actually decided that, okay, now I've had it with this. I've spent a lot of time working. So now let me pursue this movie dream. And uh, so I was actually, I had set up to go and meet Mr. Bachchan and pitch an idea to him on a Friday. So it was, I still remember that because it was quite a momentous day in my life. So it was a Friday morning. We had a meeting with him at 11 o'clock and Sunil Doshi, who was my you know friend yeah, and, yeah. You know, who does yeah. a lot of work with me, you know, Sunil. So yeah, Sunil yeah. had set up the meeting and he calls me at like, whatever, 10.45 and says, hi, where are you? So I said, where am I? I'm in office. He said, what are you doing? We, you know, we have the meeting with Mr. Bachchan at 11. I said, oh, shit, Sunil, I'm so sorry. Guess what happened? Everyone got fired yesterday. I got promoted. I'm the new head of programming of Star Plus. I'm not coming. So um, that's what happened. You know, it was all, all of a sudden, Peter became CEO. I became head of programming. And then I suddenly inherited Star Plus into my life and had to go from there. Um, so... It sort of went on. It's almost like then. it's almost like you are a godfather figure in in Hong Kong. Somebody made a phone call. Next thing you know, you're the boss. Everything changed overnight. Well, I'm not the boss. Actually, it was more traumatic because then my hope was that I become the head of programming of Star Plus while these guys are around, not okay, when they are so, gone. Because so the responsibility is shared. Yeah. No, yeah, and it's also good. like I'm on super thin ice, right? Because now I got to now become even closer to you know got to make friends and you know build out a whole new relationship with Peter Mukherjee. Um, right. Who we knew, of course, because he was there since 93 when the time I was there. So we were friends. But even then, we've never had a real you know, sort of a reporting relationship up until then. Right. I'll tell you what, I want to talk about Peter Mukherjee, obviously, not because of any gossip, etc. That would not be the reason. But uh, we'll do that a little later after we take a break. Before we take the break, I want to just fast forward a little bit to where you are now. Because the, the, then the growth became very exponential in a sense. You know, you started, you started becoming, sims. everybody knew Samir Nair was. Uh, you started becoming the, the guy who makes decisions, uh, sort of launches careers, uh, you know, destroys programs, makes programs, that kind of thing. So just take us through what happens next now. Uh, as, uh, as you, in a sense... Help so change television. Then, I mean, after that, became head of programming of Star. The following year, we do KBC and Kyonki. So, uh, so that all happens. Star becomes a big success. Then, all the other things that happened in Star. Then, around 2007, we leave Star. Um, I start Imagine. Peter starts 9X. All of those things happen. Um, Imagine goes on four years. Then, leave Imagine. Um, I became entrepreneur again. Spend a couple of years doing this, that, and the other. Then go to Balaji, set up Alt Balaji with Ekta. Uh, and then three years later, I start, start applause. And now it's five years from there. So, yeah. And, and it's time for us to play some applause. As we started applause. <laughs> Rishi, my sound man, is trying, looking for a job. In fact, he's stuck in a podcast. So, this is the right guy to talk to. All right? <laughs> and he, he doesn't give you a job in applause. He can give you a job from anywhere along the way. He's left his imprint there. Um, yeah, so we, what we do is we'll take a quick break and then we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about what's happening right now in your life, also the AMAs, and a couple of things about Peter Mukherjee and his uh, estranged wife, whose name I forget, after this <laughs> quick break. Samir Nair. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. It's been another great week on the IBM Podcast Network. On IBM Likes, Nehil, Antriksh, and Nikhil compile a list of their favorite patriotic movies on the occasion of Independence Day. On Cock and Bull, Cyrus, Puneet, Harsh, and Meghna chat about the political upheaval in Bihar. On Varta Lab, Akash and Naveen chat with fellow comedian Sumit Saurabh about his outing on Amazon Prime video, Vanj Kanash. On Do What Floats Your Boat, Danish speaks to YouTuber and gaming content creator Myth Pat, where they dive deep into the world of gaming. And on Marathi Khirki Tun, the Deshmukhs explain why protecting and conserving the environment is important. Once again, we'd like to remind you all about our merch. There's some amazing stuff out there. Please go to our website, ibmpodcast.com. Click on the shop tab and do check out what's available there. I'm sure you'll find something you like. Do follow us on social media. We're IBM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And also, I'd like to remind you all to please tell a friend about this show if you're enjoying it. It will give you somebody to talk to the show about. Yeah, you know, it really does help us too, so that too. Also, please rate us on any of the platforms you're listening to us on. And you can check us out on YouTube. We have a page on our website, which basically lists all our YouTube channels. Please go check that out. And finally, we would like to thank our sponsors this week, Boat, Lifestyle, Small Case, and Intel Pro. Thank you so much for making this possible. All right, back here after the break, we're joined by Silvery and actually offline we were discussing, Samir, you were telling me a Mike Tyson story because I just asked you actually how long you've been in the business and we figured it's 33 odd years in television where you've seen the wow. entire shape of television sort of change with you. So you and television are personified in a sense. So what is the Mike Tyson story that you're going to tell us? 
So when we were in when I was in Goldwater, we used to acquire rights to international sport events and not telecast them on Doordarshan. So there was this one Mike Tyson fight, which of course was a very famous fight, but at the time and we were doing it, so the rights had been acquired and they were going to be telecast on Doordarshan. And MRF is a sponsor, ties with muscle, all of that, and we got the slot and everything. And then the fight happens. This is late in the night, and uh, the live fight happens, and that's the one where Bust, Tyson. Uh, no, not Buster Douglas. It was someone else. But Tyson finished the fight in eight seconds. You know, he almost uprooted uh, the guy's head. Uh, so, the shortest one would be uh, uh, Joe Fraser's son. Yeah, I th- Marvin, I, Fra- Marvin I, Fraser. Yeah, I don't know, but he and it was really odd because we had a half-hour slot and we had the top and tail and all the noise and this and that. And the fight <laughs> starts and then he he sort of gives him a you no know, uh, uppercut and almost takes his head off. And then all we did for the next 5-10 minutes was going on playing the replays of that because we had no other play. The match is over. And then the sort of thing was done in 10 minutes. And I mean, my sort of initiation to television and live television and all came from such kind of weird things, you know. Uh, so the Grammy we, Awards, yeah. we edited the Grammy Awards. The, this was the one where Millie Vanilli did the performance and then were later the proven fake one. to be frauds. Yeah. That, mm. Wow. So, yeah. See, and, so now you know what we uh, anchors and VJs have to go through now when they say now just kill time, kill time. It's the same thing <laughs> yeah, because the artist is not calm or whatever. They can't go on with the program for whatever reason. Wow, fantastic. Uh, Samir, you also worked with Odd Balazi and Star. Uh, what was Odd Balazi like? What was it like working with Ekta Kapoor and seeing all that become the empire that We want the truth and only the truth. Yeah, so actually I, there are two parts to working with Ekta Kapoor. I first met her in 99. Uh, when I was in Star and I'd become the head of programming and uh, they had come and pitched a show to us, uh, which we did. That's the famous Kyunki Saad Bhi Kabhi Bahuti. And then that went on to doing a whole range of shows with Balaji and Ekta at the time. Not to mention one um, of the actresses became a cabinet minister. Yes. I don't know, name, name. Yes. Oh, yeah. Great, great. great. <laughs> And so that was yes. the first uh, you know, stint of working with Ekta and we did a lot of work, I think, across through Star, even at Imagine. So I've been sort of known her as a friend and as a you know, industry colleague all this period. Then I joined Palaji in 2014. Um, this time it was really to, um, you know, Ekta always wanted to set up her own channel. And the plan was that rather than setting up now a broadcast channel, because TV is sort of, you know, uh, you know time has passed and streaming was around the corner. So we decided to create a streaming channel called Old Balaji. So my time in Balaji was primarily spent in getting that that plan in place, getting all of those parts in order, raising money for it, and then launching it, which is what we did. So, I mean, I know Ekta very well. So, I mean, it'd be difficult for me to, you know, like, how's it working with her? I've known her from when she was a kid and I was a kid. So, uh, and oh. she's an extremely, or what shall we say? Silvery. Uh, obsessed. He, Samir has been on TV or rather in the television world for 33 yeah. years, yeah. which is more than your age. It is more than so, my age. <laughs> <you're> <laughs> minus something to his career at the moment. Mathematically, yes. it's difficult for us to understand. Um, let's uh, get to the elephant in the room in a sense, the Peter Mukherjee years and his infamous wife. Um, how close was that relationship? I've seen you at events and parties together. So there was a decently close relationship. Oh, very close. Actually, Peter, uh, in 99, as I was telling you, when Mr. Basu and team left, Peter became CEO, I became head of programming. So from that point on, we'd already known each other from 94, but from that point on, it was a reporting relationship because I used to report to him apart from the gang in Hong Kong. And uh, I think we got along really well. He's been a terrific boss, a terrific you know support system in my life. Um, great colleague. And he's a really funny guy. Uh, you know, so he is really witty and you know, extremely, you know, sort of comical and jovial and quite the prankster. And we got on really well. And actually, also what happened is that after that, when he became CEO, I became head of programming, we also ended up succeeding very quickly. So like this happened in Feb 99. And by July 2000, KBC Kyoki happened, Star became number one, and we were kings of the hill and blah, blah. So it was quite a, it was a terrific working relationship. You know, Star grew through leaps and bounds. We did all kinds of things. And Peter and me have traveled all over the place on numerous jaunts because he was CEO. I then became COO. So we spent a lot of time in, you know, the sort of, you know, essentially we were partners in crime doing all these things, you know, making... We don't use that phrase, Peter. Uh, this is wrong. Sorry, that phrase <laughs> is out of place. Yeah, really. <laughs> Please can you dial that back a bit? That's scary. But if I can ask, like in those early days, how did you decide uh, what projects to like uh, green light and what projects to work on? What attracted your attention then? 
so the two actually the two big things that we did and really changed our fortunes and really worked out for us because just before that when i first became head of programming we did like a whole range of shows you know and uh, no matter i mean it was like 25 shows were launched we did some really good things we did star best sellers which has you know resulted in the rise of most of the young directors of today not so young anymore now uh, we <laughs> yeah. did you know shows like men <laughs> and we did yeah. rajdhani all sorts of things but nothing yeah. really fired you know because there was z and sony and they were really strongly entrenched and star plus you know despite its best efforts we couldn't really break through uh, then in late 99 the joint venture with z split um so we used to be in a joint venture with z which required us to be half hindi half english that's why we used to have star news at 9 o'clock yeah um, correct, so after yeah. the joint venture split you know pranoy used to do the 9 pm news correct so after First the joint venture I mean... came to an end um you know this plan came up that okay so what are we going to do we want to go full hindi so the first thing i said was that, okay let's do who wants to be a millionaire because i had seen the show before and we wanted to do it wow. so that was became plan 1 and then around april um ekta and jitu ji came and met me and said that you know that we want to do this show and i heard it for the first time this one kyunki saath bhi kabhi bahuti so i green lit it and said that, okay chalo let's do this as a daily soap in prime time which is 10:30 at the time and so kbc would come at 9 o'clock yes. uh, kyunki would come at 10:30 and that was our first start said, let's start with kbc and see where we go but so uh, you, you know kbc was going to become the phenomenon that it became because when it started it used to be like the family watching time was kbc uh, hmm. you would sit and try to answer the questions before the guest could you know and yeah. uh, so it became like a, a cultural phenomenon uh, immediately it almost like right? so i i think when we set out to make it i mean we knew it was a big uh, show because it had already been successful in the us and uk um, yeah. i think i got a lot of you know skepticism from it from everyone in the industry i mean for most people it was you know in a history of dumb ideas this is going to be the dumbest you know taking a fading superstar doing a quiz show in prime time that to monday to friday and you know like i mean how stupid is that Uh, but it turned out really well so i mean we knew we were trying to make a successful show but the extent of its success obviously took everyone by surprise um, especially also, also also his personality he was superb he made hindi cool again he had non hindi speaking people interested in the show i mean yeah. Yeah. let's give him some credit and, no no and mr bachchan is outstanding because you know like i mean at the end of the day i mean you know i often get credited for bringing him to the small screen but the fact of the matter is that you know for all actors it is their decision to make right and he did make that decision you know everyone advised him against it all did family he all friends no and everyone was like he used to be very you know like what am i doing should i be doing this is it a good idea is it not but then finally when we took him to london we took him to the studios and we shot the promos there and we showed him the setup he said look this is what we are trying to do so he told me on the flight back that listen if you do this exactly the way you are promising to do it phad ke rakh denge So I said, "Arey, sir, we will do it. We will do it exactly the way." And we, in fact, recreated Elstree Studios in Pimp City. You know, down to the directional of enter. You know, from the which door do you enter and turn left or right? So now, Silvery, the Brits use uh, our Film City Studio. Wow! Yeah, <laughs> just, just cheaper, faster. I mean, we can do both languages also. Not a problem. Um, but can he answer all the questions himself? That's a question. I mean, no. <laughs> That's a tough one. You can't know all the answers. No, but he's quite, he's quite, he's quite good with knowledge and all. Whatever I've interacted with him, I think his GK is pretty good. So he'd probably be, he'd be, he would have done well. Oh, okay, he would have done well. He yeah. would have done sure, well. Sure, sure. What it. do you think, Samir? Yeah. If Amitabh played against Amitabh in KBC, <laughs> would how, how would he have? How, he would have got got a few points. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm sure he would have because he is you no. Know, and obviously, over the years, doing so many yeah. uh, years of KBC, is that you also come in contact with so much more knowledge and so much more information, right? but other smart people who have done really well on kbc have been sharuk sharuk is really smart i mean yeah. on his episode of kbc it was you know the celebrity episode where money is donated charity he actually got to winning the crore so i mean it was quite without quite any handsome. cheating without no, obviously no With, cheating without any setting huh. Huh. no no setting at all <laughs> in fact is, he used to do that all the time do any actors that, ask for the questions beforehand and all Uh, well, when sure, they do, on. the the position is that you don't get to. We obviously can't give you any questions or answers, but we try because it's a celebrity episode is made for charity, so it's not sure. designed to make you lose on the first thing. Thing, ah, thinga, get yeah. out of here. So you still got to go. So what we try and do is just try and find out what your likes and dislikes. You know, what are your interest areas, and then try and build questions around that. But you still got to answer it, and it's not easy because the minute it get past ten, uh, twelve lakh mark. then i mean you got to earn the charity you want to give so but we found that most people are way more knowledgeable than what we think they are yeah 
Yeah, also yeah. our charities have always been our own family. So uh, if we ever get a chance, Silvi, remember to crack it, huh? Immediately yeah. for for the right charity. <laughs> charity begins at home. Yeah, no, go, beta. Begins at home. Okay, one quick question before we go into the AMAs. I know he doesn't have too much time. Samir, but and this is a naive question, but uh, so what's the difference for you in television and OTT then? I mean, is there a difference now that that's your world? But I think it's really it's a difference of technology. Um, you know, for India, what happened is that because when we did the Sas Bahu shows in 2000, it really you know KBC was a hit. But I think the bigger hits were the Sas Bahu shows because they continued to date and they are like really have become the the killer programming app for television across languages, across everything. And that, in a way, prevented us from having our HBO moment. You know, of creating high quality premium drama series. We never made Sopranos. We never did The Wire. We never did all those things. You know, India still TV is run by Sajbhav shows, you know, or reality yeah. shows. That's what TV is run by. So I think what OTT has done when the streamers arrived is that it created that opportunity to create this high quality drama series of 10 episodes into multiple seasons, much like how the Americans have been doing from the late 90s. Um, so that's an exciting thing because I have consumed so much of that television but never got a chance to make it even though I ran television in India for so many years because we were not too focused on, you know, well, just succeeding at what we do. So Samir, what is OTT your is favorite that. thing? What, what would you say is your favorite thing on television right now? Like, are you watching something that you would On say, TV, I'm great? not watching really. I mean, on TV, TV, I'm not watching. I watch a lot of streaming but I... My I have a family and we do consume a lot of MasterChef. Um, okay. So that's the one oh, TV nice. show that is still being watched a lot. Also, um, KBC is still running and in hundreds of languages. Yeah, yeah KBC, KBC is running yeah. in all multiple languages and all of that. A lot of sport get consumed. I stopped watching news in the last two, three years. Otherwise, that used to be something that I was interested in. But I have not watched any news broadcast in two years. But sport, I think sport is the one big driver that remains, you know, what gets me back to TV. I watch IPL only on TV. Not oh. on, not on streaming. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think that's. Udai, Udai there's a channel know. called Tata Sky <laughs> Hits. Uh, there's a channel called Tata Sky Hits where Tata Sky has got a come, you know, a sort of collection of the golden oldies. You know, all those crazy one. Are you being served? And you know, Cheers yeah. and you know, all those shows. So uh, that's yeah. something that we watch. Cheers. So, uh, do you remember yes. nine? Yeah, eight, I've seen eight, 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 American I've seen sitcom. Yeah. yeah. Are you being served? Is BBC? Yeah. Yeah. Fraser is yeah. a spin-off. Yeah, yeah, not bad, not bad. Yeah, yeah. The kids got... It's good, man. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. 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 <laughs> for, for a substance abuser, yeah. I'm very impressed. <laughs> very impressed. Should, we, should we go into the AMAs? Yeah, let's go into the AMAs. Right. Okay, so Sami, this is a bit of uh, freewheeling questions. So we know where they're coming mm. from. Yeah. So, so be on one, guard. First huh? one comes in from Nishi Thakur, who says, uh, Hi, Saras and dear guest. Do you sometimes feel like you did something too late in life? Uh, as in, what was your, Yaar, ye to pehle hi kar lena chahiye tha moment? That's what she says. Okay, I think somebody so like should he take says, this. Do you uh, ever feel that you waited too long to do something? But you're, there's a lot of destiny involved in your life, it looks like. You know, like you do yeah, one thing and something I else mean, happens. Yeah, like many times when I look back, I think that, okay, you know, you could have done things like, like for example, applause, right? So the plan in 99 was to go and meet Mr. Bachchan, get him to you know, agree to my plan to make this movie and then use that as a kickoff to set up a company like Applause, which would be a film studio and work with like-minded directors and producers and create this entity. Uh, but none of that happened. So it took uh, you know, a full, you know, whatever, 18 years before I got a chance to do that. So, but could I have done it before? Maybe. Maybe if that had not happened, maybe it would have worked out. Maybe it wouldn't have. But, you know, I really don't look back to think um, whether things would have been different because, you know, may have been gone terribly wrong as well. So, But can I tell you my observation on this? And I feel very bad about this. I feel there's too much television and OTT programming anyway. And of course, you've mm -hmm. uh, contributed when the history of the world is written. There's no doubt your name will lead all the rest and all that. Fair enough. But I feel we lost out on some great chicken rolls. And I feel there are not enough chicken rolls out there. So I feel <laughs> that chicken rolls, if it was given a little more, you know, power, he started new one there for the first half. He started sure. making chicken rolls. Wow. He would leave Andheri. Interesting story. Yeah, because okay. he physically made the chicken roll, go yeah. to Hong Kong Bank area in Fountain and sell it to us in a store area there or a small restaurant there. Physically. And he actually uh, didn't have inventory in the end because he was doing so well. About 200 odd per day, but didn't have enough inventory because he couldn't cope being wow. a single guy doing that. And I'm wondering, what if that franchised out, you know? I mean, screw yeah. KBC and everything else. What if that, you know, Naya's rolls all over the world is Naya's rolls. It's huge. It was like, I mean, Dubai, Chicago, you know, Arkansas, London, Paris, Tokyo, everywhere. 
it would have been huge. Yeah. I think we missed yeah. on something on that chicken See? thingy. Well, it's no, great what ifs. It's never too <laughs> late. Great what ifs. Yeah. I mean, with all due respect, Saas bhi kabhi bahuti. I mean, really. How many great Hollywood movies? Sami bloody Nair himself can't bear to watch it after five minutes. What the hell is he saying? <laughs> all right. Uh, next one comes in from Mahima Prakash. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mahima Prakash has asked, Hello, Sameer, sir. Uh, glad to get you uh, get to hear you on, in conversation with Cyrus. You've been a part of the Indian media industry for decades now. If you had to sum up your experience in one or two great lessons, what would those be? That's tough. Yeah, that is a tough one. One or two great lessons. Yeah. Um, Put you, you on know, the spot. I, I, oh. No, it's it's okay. I mean, my my favorite sort of example for this is that you know our business is such that from the time you hear an idea for the first time to when you finally see it on screen, that's a journey, right? Because from the idea to screen, now if you take OTT or movies or anything, it's like an 18 month journey. It takes 18 months before it finally shows up on screen. So the one thing I've learned is that, you know, ideas are good, but it's never the story, it's the storytelling. And in the process of the storytelling, you got to do it with people you like, people whom you get along with, because it's a collaborative effort and it's going to be a long journey. So if you like these people and if they're all like-minded and if you can get that wavelength going, the chances of you ending up with success are higher than if it's going to be an unhappy journey. So because our entire business is a journey, it's never the destination and the outcome really then ends up in the, with the audience. So there's not much you can do about that. But if you can have fun in the process, um, I think you'd have fun in, in your career and in your life. And I guess you can't say it's an exact science, right? Whatever people say, because then everybody will have successful programming. Yeah. You know, if you could right. write something, I mean, after all these years, with all your knowledge and the fact that people will punt on you, hence you'll be hired by the biggest studios. End of the day, you can't 100% guarantee that X will work for no. Y market. Yeah. No, and you will fail. And in fact, the, the best part about our business is that, you know, the amount of error that occurs because, you know, like, because no one sets out to make a flop. Everyone is setting out to make a hit, but flops do happen and they happen because of... Maybe that's know, a great idea. Why don't we set out to make a flop? Well, that's <laughs> a great idea. I know it's been done before. Let's, I know, but let's... I, somebody, we've, we've got the idea here. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> you just cancel the stream as fast as possible. Yeah, oof. This is superb. Chicken rolls! We can go back to chicken rolls! <laughs> ah, the dreams. The dreams. <laughs> Thank God we yes. flopped. Nair's rolls coming soon. So, Sounds a little vulgar also. Check out Nair's rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like so it's fat, fat is, you know. <laughs> yeah, fat is good, bro. Fat is good. <laughs> so, what what is next for you now, sir? So, what are you working on next? What well, the big, I mean, there are a whole range of shows happening. There's can like fifty season things two. on this. I'm sure there is yeah. City of Dreams season three, Criminal Justice season three is going to launch. But the big ones, the two big ones that are you know, sort of currently in our in our horizon is the big series we are doing on Gandhi. Uh, which is you know, based on Ramchandra Guha's books. We've cast Prati Gandhi to play Gandhi. We've got Hansel Mehta to direct it. Gandhi is so Gandhi. Gandhi really really big. Mehta is Mehta. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Patel bhi <aave>. so, <laughs> so that's that's a big one because it's going to be, you know, as a story of biopic on Gandhi. It's a story of the Indian independence struggle and it's also like the birth of a nation. So it's a, a really big one for us. The other one is the Amar Chitra Katha. We acquired the wow. rights to the entire yeah. catalog. And I want Big to fan. animate the whole wow. comic series. And the thought Super. with that is to really wow. take the epics, which is Mahabharata and Ramayana, and make it at an international standard for an international audience. So it's not really about you know, making Mahabharata. So BJP goes abroad. Is. <laughs> yeah, of course. Why not? <laughs> India conquers. <laughs> now, Japanese follow us. <laughs> Excellent. So I think because see, listen, we consume Greek mythology, we consume Nordic True. mythology. So I agree. why not? Why not reverse? In fact, no, no, absolutely. In fact, I can see yeah. it being in the flavor. If you look at Avengers and that kind of range of you know genre or whatever, epics go into that genre: fighting, color, yeah, uniform. Was that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Was that yeah. So I can I can see yeah. it being successful across cultures. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Stories old as the so, hills, you know, good versus bad. Huh. Right. So, I mean, so those are two big things we're working on. Then there are a whole bunch of movies. We've made one some thing, movies. One thing, but you haven't cast, with... you haven't... It's an animation, but you need voices. Uh, Silvery, what do you we want need to need voices, I mean, the, yes. the monkey. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure, if you uh, pass, yeah. part with a little money, which goes back yeah. to the coffers of the producer, we'll figure yeah. out something. Yes, yes. Sure, sure. Yes, we should do that. Yes. <laughs> 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 okay. 
That's it. Yeah. All right, Samir, we won't waste any more of your time because you're busy trying to make money and make the world a better place for people to watch on different platforms, not just OTT. Um, any party words from Samir Nair for any young aspirant? Because again, this comedy of errors, it is actually that. It's not like we're being, you know, flippant about it, but it is actually that. You started somewhere, you ended somewhere else completely and it's almost like, you know, it, it wasn't your idea. It just sort of happens. Yeah, and in fact, you know, that's what it is. That they say that life, life is what happens to you when you're busy making other Speaking plans. John right? Lennon, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's always the case. And for all of us, it's true. So, you know, you always set out to do something. And sometimes it takes you on that path. And I, I reason that if you set out to do something and you actually get there, it's probably a boring outcome, right? Um, yeah. you know, like people who set out to be doctors and become doctors and then end up being doctors. And that's pretty much it. It's like there's a lot of life has been missed. So, I just want to tell guys, I think, yeah. I'm but, just sort uh, of guys, you should understand for that. the adventure. Yeah. No, you're right because you know gir when girls reject you, that's the romance. That's why Rishi, I'm telling you, keep your head up. When, when girls say yes immediately, your life has got no meaning here. What do you do? It's over. It's games. It's like you won Wimbledon. Yes. Abhi kya karega? You look at Boris Becker today. You know, three-time winner, and you know, I mean, he's in oh. jail. So yeah. think about it, Rishi. You need. The, the struggle, the struggle. Yeah, the struggle yes. is important. You need the nose. The yeah. nose are important. Yeah. But uh, not not to make light of the fact that Samir Naya had all kinds of strange beginnings yes. and then suddenly landed at the apex position in uh, television and now entertainment. Samir, thank you very much. I hope we've chumped you, so chum you so enough. Much. So I don't have to use the couch next time I come over to applause. <laughs> <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> thank you. See you soon. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.